Staring at the carnage, praying that the sun would never rise. Living another day in disguise. These feelings can't be right. Lend me your courage to stand up and fight. Oh, tonight. Mm -hmm. Hello again, my friends, and welcome back on this Wednesday, December 13th. Today was the day that my book was released on Amazon. Those who pre-ordered it will get it before Christmas. This is the book, The Sleeper Agent, The Rise of Lyme Disease, Chronic Illness, and the Great Imitator Antigens of Biological Warfare. This is also my last article that I have written up on my site. And so you may not see you may not see some videos for like well actually I may see I have all these ideas that I may just do videos for and not because it, it'll take me a lot longer if I get a go do the blog posts and everything. So I may just, like, try to do daily videos if I can, if I can keep up that momentum. But for now, I'm, I'm going to cover this last article, which is going over, again, a, a topic that I already covered a few videos back about immune tolerance, and this one called, this one being called the dark triad of immune tolerance. I call it the dark triad because it's chronic disease, mental illness, and cancer. That's those are those are three outcomes of immune tolerance. With because and for those who don't know, immune tolerance is ju it's basically just a another term for chronic immunosuppression or immune deficiency. Um, where the immune system is so overwhelmed that it can't do its normal upkeep and keep things out of the central nervous system. So it enables a central, a central nervous system invasion, reactivation of latent virus, which, which becomes most of the chronic disease. Um, those reactivated viruses and even with things like Lyme disease most of the disease that is chronic are viruses um, and when you get that central nervous system invasion you get mental you know mental health problems neurological problems and I would say another thing that comes in that realm is, is Things like drug addiction. I was thinking about it just before I, was, I, I uh, hit record. I was thinking about what I was going to say in this video. I was thinking about how a lot, I mean, the, the, the drug epidemic makes total sense in light of a, of, a, uh, of a society that is absolutely just immunologically overwhelmed. And getting that secondary neurotropic effect. The invasion of the central nervous system. And basically, a lot of people grow up, including myself, feeling like just awful. But they, but, but they can't really put their finger on why they feel so bad. Why things always seem to be going horribly wrong. You know, um because they feel so awful all the time. And so it's 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 not surprising that a lot of people gravitate 
to try and find relief to that. And, and unfortunately, eventually that leads, you know, because if they go to the doctor, eventually what happens is usually that doctor or the, the long line of doctors that they end up going to see will eventually start prescribing them narcotics. And then depending on how that plays out, a lot of times people end up going to street drugs and, and things of that nature. So, you know, and I, you know, for, for many years I had many problems. It's crazy. Things have been going so well for me, though, in the last 10 years. But, like, the first, from, like, the time I was in my teens all the way to 30 was a complete disaster. And I'm saying, you know, everything, drugs, uh troublemaking, just you name it. And uh, eventually I straightened out and then and then I got chronically ill and then I realized I had been sick my whole life and my whole life up to that point made complete sense. When I started to learn the dark triad of immune tolerance, my entire life made complete sense and I was like wow if only I had known that you know so long ago because the thing is is that when you're not aware of things it's easier for those things to get the best of you but when you're aware of those things you're like okay this is something I can grasp this is something I can tackle this is something that I can overcome um, but for a lot of people, and I'm talking millions and millions of Americans, they are profoundly affected, but have absolutely no idea. And this is also enabled by the public health system who tells them there's nothing wrong with them or they, they are misdiagnosed even the chronic, a lot of the chronic diseases um, will, will be sent to psychiatric places. And, and although um, mental health problems can be a factor in the central nervous system dise diseases, the, the part about the chronic disease, see... They send people to psychiatry because they're saying you're imagining your symptoms. You're you're mentally ill, but that is not a real men mental illness. That's a real chronic. Di well, it's their their term for it, somatoform, is a fake disease. There's no such thing. They only use that term to cover for that chronic disease that they're trying to hide that actually exists, the person is really sick, and Traub's LCM virus showed how this is so, how you have this active viral infection, but you have no antibodies, you have little to no inflammation, and your, your blood work comes back totally normal. And so, but you feel awful, and, and you know, you can feel pain from head to toe and all that stuff because because reactivated virus is basically attacking your body from head to toe but to them that whole that whole condition is something that they're trying to cover up so they made up this word somatoform it's basically like in a nutshell it's you're imagining you're sick so that your body is actually producing these symptoms. It's, it's nonsense. So when I say the dark triad of immune tolerance and I talk about mental illness, I'm talking about the neurological problems that result. I'm not talking about somatoform. Okay, um, so that's very important to clarify right now. Um... And so, when you get that chronic immunosuppression, you get the chronic disease, reactivated viruses, which forms the basis of the chronic disease, you get the central nervous system invasion, 
And what ends up happening after being overwhelmed for so many years, eventually it leads to cancer and cancer-like outcomes. And um, I think I'm going to do another video, maybe tomorrow, about viruses and cancer because those two, the two are related and many of those dormant viruses like in the herpes virus family like Epstein-Barr virus which is a common like 90, 98% of people have in latent form and then there's a bunch of other ones like human herpes virus 6 which is a encephalitis virus um, chicken pox and a lot of those are cancer causing when reactivated or at least have a very high potential to cause cancer. It doesn't mean that you'll absolutely get cancer, but it does mean there's a very high likelihood. And they did uh, studies for many years about the relationship and how these are oncogenic viruses and also viruses like SV40 that had contaminated the polio shots um, were also eventually shown to be oncogenic um, and this was even though if you looked it up on Wikipedia it would try to tell you otherwise but there's actually a place where they do where they do admit that it is oncogenic and that was given those tainted shots were given to 98 million Americans so about half the population by 1960 and I do talk about that in my last chapter, Tainted Immunity. Um, very concerning. But, you know, um, Eric Traub was the one who discovered immune tolerance as it relates to infectious disease. And he discovered it with the LCM virus, which is which stands for lymphocytic choriomeningitis virus. And he spent his entire career studying that phenomenon. And I, and I discuss it at length in my book. So, you know, this book is not just about Lyme disease. I just, I put that in the title, but I also put chronic illness, which, you know, explains the immune tolerance, but I explain it's about so much more than just Lyme disease in the, in the weapon I-6. It's about the, the entire immune tolerance spectrum, the history, the history of stealth weapons. There's just so much in this book. You know, like, some people, if they're really interested in knowing this stuff, they may want to read it several times. They may have to go back and read it several times if they really want to absorb it. I mean, because there's just... <laughs> There's so much information in that book. But I had done a graphic a while back, and it basically, in the middle, is the antigen, which I call the great imitator antigen, which is found on Borrelia burgdorferi, the Lyme disease spirochete. It's on tuberculosis. It's on lymphocytic choriomeningitis. It's on hepatitis B virus, it's on foot and mouth disease virus, and up here, Aspergillus fumigatus. Actually, I'm not exactly sure if that one has it. I think it does, but maybe I should have put a, maybe I should have put Candida albicans. Um, mycoplasma fermentans, that's another one. My, the mycoplasmas cause it. But it basically, when that hits those certain immune, re immune receptors, it causes that immune tolerance outcome. And right here it says immune tolerance and virus reactivation. And then I show down on the bottom there a bunch of uh, images. One is opportunistic infections. And it's got a person sticking their tongue out because it's supposed to show like candida on their tongue. And then I have a picture of the E. coli bacteria uh, about 
leaky gut syndrome because it that's another thing that sometimes happens with immune tolerance b cell immortalization and cancers basically virus that the EBV basically hijacks your B cells and then turns it into a virus factory and eventually when you're so overwhelmed it turns to cancer. Then I have a picture of the brain, meningoencephalitis and neurotropism. So swelling of the brain and virus taking to the brain and, and causing a neurotropic disease, neurological disease. And virus being established in the nerves. That's kind of the the entirety of the image but you know the, there'll be plenty of people who say oh yeah but Eric Chubb's mo his, his studies of LCM virus in mice but the, that's just mice we're humans we're not mice well it was a it was an animal model of a process that also happens in humans and it's kind of like the animal model of Epstein-Barr virus even though LCM virus does actually infect humans and causes the same disease in humans as it does in mice. But there are, basically his studying of that was, was to study a general condition of virus reactivation and things that suppress the immune system to such an extent that cause that immune tolerance. And it doesn't matter what animal it's done in, the process is the same. And you will, you will find all the things that happen to the mice, you will also find in the human domain. So, that's, that's not really a valid argument. But, of course, you know, people that have never even looked at any of Eric Chobb's work will be saying that. You know, people that maybe they'll be doctors or whatnot that were trained with the bogus immunology that is not correct and that's why nobody can get diagnosed these days when they have a chronic disease because those doctors are taught the wrong immunology they're not even taught about the infectious um, immune tolerance they're not they're not taught about it it's a non-disease to them but that's why this information is so important because there are so many millions and millions of people out there that are sick with these nasty chronic diseases, but they're being told you're not sick. There's nothing wrong with you. When the truth is that is far from the case and they are actually far more sick than most people who have acute, well, people who get acute diseases they're usually, they're sick, they're heavily sick for a time, and then it goes away. But people with these chronic diseases, they're always sick, and the disease expression is a little different. Well, it's a lot different, but it's just as, I would say, even more tormenting when you're looking at a long-term disease. I mean, a lot of people end up committing suicide um, with diseases like this. So it, it's a serious disease. It may not kill you directly, but indirectly, you know, cancer, drug overdoses from people who turn to drugs to deal with it, then suicide, and, you know, people who get murdered by mentally ill people who have, you know, that serious neurotropic damage. That's like an indirect way that this kill, that this can kill. Um, but, you know, none of this is admitted by the public health system, so. But I can show without a shadow of a doubt, with voluminous medical or scientific research, this dark triad of immune tolerance. Like, the, it's, it's, it's beyond all question. There's no doubt about it. The dark triad exists. 
And I will try to cover some more um, aspects of this if I think of any more relevant points. Like I said, I'm going to try to make like videos um, more often. I'm going to try to do them daily if I can, but I, I can't promise that's going to be so. But it will be often and people will have a very good understanding. The people who watch all my videos eventually will get it. And because I think when I was sick for a while and before I knew about all this stuff, I think it got, it took me about a year of like constantly being explained it and constantly reading about it. And then finally, it's like, it just, I know the condition so well. And I, it's, it's so easy to spot. Like a lot of my friends are sick and they'll start telling me their symptoms. It's just classic signs of immune tolerance. And, uh, and you know, it's going to be like one of the most popular forms of disease. I think it already definitely is. It's already, I would say, the most pop, the most proliferative disease in America, immune tolerance. That's why the book is so important. Well, I'm going to leave it there. And with that said, everybody take care of yourself, be yourself, build yourself, and I will see you on the other side. Dark years brought endless rain Out in the cold I lost my way But storms won't last, they clear the air For something new The sun came out and brought you through Time full of words to say